Yesterday I spoke on the mystical conspiracy of the master as a device in the process of transformation of the seekers. I will speak on how does a master enters into the final abyss through the door of death. Death and birth are two doors of the tunnel within which soul traverses. You can say that the, it has become quite significant recently when the scientists discovered that a big star suddenly disappears. A big star, not a small minor star and nobody knows where it has gone and then all of a sudden a new star is born. So it was discovered that there are black holes. All of a sudden a big star disappears, nobody knows where it is going. That is called a black hole. It's like a tunnel from one end is a black hole. The star disappears, remains there in the tunnel unknown and then from the other side there must be a hole again, an opening from where a new star emerges. So too, birth and death are the two doors of the tunnel through which one comes into life and one exits life. The moment an individual attains to enlightenment, enlightenment means ego is sublimated, there is no more attachment. Although he embraces everything, no one can seem to be more attached than a master, than enlightened person. But deep down he knows that this is an act. You would have seen a particular actor enacting a scene. He is very intensely involved in love affairs in the scenes of movie set. But then he knows when somebody dies, he knows it very well that this is simply an acting. It is simply an act and that is what it is very relevant in the process. You may see a movie, two movies running simultaneously in the same arcade and the same actor is acting. In one movie, the male lead role actor dies. But does he really die? It is the role that he has come to perform on the stage that dies. That actor remains. What is the difference between the actor and the being, the reality? We are all like actors. The world is fine a stage on which we come to act our part. The wheel of time to swiftly it moves, goes on mopping as it rolls. No power can its fury ebb or check its passage. It has been going and shall go forever without a break. The frigid claws of death may soon descend and seal your humble fate. Then you shan't have time to mend. You shan't have time to me. We carry mask faces. We are actors on this stage. If we perform our role beautifully, our roles will be upgraded. When you perform the role of a villain in a movie, because that is the role is given to him, if he performs the role in its totality, that he really looks like a villain, then his role will be upgraded in the next movie this happens. So too as an individual, we born as an actor, but we get involved in attachment, this is my wife, this is my son, this is my husband, and undergo stages of pain and suffering. Enlightenment means the ego is sublimated, we are aware that we are actors. The master-disciple relationship is a game. The master knows the disciple is made up of the same stuff that I am. What is the difference between a bud that has not blossomed and a flower? Indeed, the bud is a flower. Every seed carries within its womb the potentiality for blossoming, but not all seeds blossom into flowers. That whole process of blossoming of a seed into flower is a spiritual dimension. Today, one bud blossoms, becomes a flower, 
the flower goes through various seasons of spring summer autumn winter and then finally it disappears but while it was alive it spreads its beauty and fragrance fills the aura with different hues and its fragrance and then when autumn comes it embraces the season of autumn willingly leaves turn gold and fills the the atmosphere with a different hue and beauty and splendor then leaves fall one by one and then those leaves that fall they are not wasted they provide nourishment for the new foliage that will appear on the tree during the spring season the master understands this the process of enlightenment makes him aware that he is one with the entire cosmos he is assimilated into the entire cosmos i am performing my role as a husband as a father as a son as a friend as a master these are the roles that i am performing and in that process i am becoming an instrument in the process of your development but this has nothing to do with me all change has to take within you i simply has the opportunity to give that role it happened after the second world war when england won and churchill was at the helm of affairs then his deputy wilson said that mr churchill it is because of you that england won the second world war churchill stood up while the felicitations were going he said wilson you are mistaken the lion's force was possessed by the countrymen i simply had the opportunity to give the role the master gives a role master awakens his presence awakens the people who are on the border line get attracted towards its energy field comes in contact gets transformed go on their way there is no attachment but out of ignorance we feel attached to this one and that one fana means the end of attachments and baka means we are subsisting only in allah subhanahu wa taala or the existence of totality and between these two shores sufism creates a bridge you as an individual are bridge when it was the time for buddha to enter into mahaparinirvana nirvana means entering into death consciously willingly lovingly joyfully when you change a role from a husband from a lover to husband you do not lament over that i am no more a lover i am now going to be the husband or wife because you know it is a journey continue but we cannot see anything beyond death so we lament over it and it happened when buddha was to enter the mahasamadhi he told his disciples on i am going into mahasamadhi now so do not disturb me same time a man called subhadra came running he said i want to meet shakyamuni tathagat he was told that buddha has prepared himself for the final journey death buddha heard it he said i am still alive and i do not want anyone came to my door and i did not meet him so after that first time buddha entered the existence totality in that the physical body dissolved then he returned then his mental body the mind the impressions the thoughts all these dissolve in our case when we go to sleep whatever we have undergone through the stage of waking that comes in the form of dreams so the mind lives on and that is what you inherited and you come back into the life again because of your unfulfilled desire your mind your emotions and so so buddha severed all his emotions and then finally entered through another door and that is mahaparinirvana such a being who enters into death consciously he does not return only if existence wants him or some work is remain then once again he can enter into existence so what is more important whatever we do we do it consciously when i meet you i am finished your death comes in i have finished my role with you for this moment i live this moment totally and in its all feel 
I have nothing remained that I have not spoken to you. This is what was needed in this moment I spoke to you. Thus Buddha attained to Mahapada Nirvana. The time of entry of another master who was our contemporary, Osho, he used to come to the Buddha hall every evening for meditation. But few days before his entering into Mahasamadhi, he got very unwell and he was not able to come. So he said he will sit down in meditation in his room. Then came the 19th of January 1990 when the time for him to enter into Mahasamadhi came. Some of his fellow seekers, his personal secretary, the doctor, they start lamenting that Master, you are going to be no more. He said, is this the way you give farewell to an enlightened Master? Is this the way? The day I became enlightened, I died physically, mentally, emotionally. He said, take me to the Buddha hall for 10 minutes and from there straight away take me to the cremation ground. Imagine, introspect on these words. Take me to the Buddha hall for 10 minutes. That means he is alive. Take me to the Buddha hall for 10 minutes and from there straight away take me to the cremation ground. So when he uttered these words, he was alive. When his body was brought to the Buddha hall, he was alive. Amidst his people, he shared his presence and he said, in my leaving, nobody will cry. Death is a moment of celebration. The being that was encaged in the body-mind prison is now free. What point in time did his soul leave the body? When he was brought to the Buddha hall, he was alive. When he came amidst his people, the hall was full of the people. He remained there for 10 minutes. During that period, 10 minutes, he would not have leave the body. When it is the 9.5 minute, 30 seconds remain during that period, he disappeared. And then he said, take me straight to the cremation ground. We do not carry a living person for cremation. We carry only when the person is died and it is declared a death certificate is given and he planned his death in that way. I can go on and on and in tomorrow's session I will speak about how the three Nakshbandi masters entered into Samadhi. My great-grandfather, his younger brother and my grandfather. Fully aware, knowing and explaining that now the life force is receding from the toes so that part of the body is no more alive. And that's how he went on explaining every moment of the transcendence of the room into the unknown oblivion.